What's up, everybody? So let's talk about this missing submersible. If y'all don't know what's going on, five men thought it was a good idea to get in a submersible, not a submarine, but a submersible, and go down in the sea, the dark, deep depths of the sea, to find the Titanic. Y'all know the Titanic. Y'all seen the movie Titanic, honey, that, um, you know, went underwater years and years ago. So they thought it was a good idea to actually go down and try to find it. End up submersible. And they only had like 96 hours of oxygen in this submersible. So now y'all, they are gone missing they lost signal about an hour and 45 minutes from when they submerged into the ocean. So they cannot be found at all. And who knows what's going on and who knows if they have survived. And their names are Shazada Daywood, his 19-year-old son, which is named Solomon Daywood. Then you have Hamish Harding. He is the CEO of Action Aviation in Dubai. Then you have Paul Henry Nargalot. He is a French explorer. And you have the Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush, who were all on the submersible. And take note, these men have money. So you would think that these men who had all this money had more common sense than to get in a submersible and go down into the dark, deep depths of the sea without a good plan of action on how to get back up, right? And listen, I'm trying to be extremely nice here, but who said that it was a good idea for them to do such a thing? I don't think that they thought that over. So I am trying to be nice. I'm trying to show compassion because it is sad that they did this and that they are down in the sea and they, they may not be found. Who knows? So this is what's been going on. So there has been a massive operation to find the missing submersible with these people on board. They just started to go out to find these people since they have not been able to be reached. And, and according to the article, the search team has some kind of hope because there's more banging sounds picked up in a remote swat of the North Atlantic Ocean. But as the craft's oxygen supply dwindle, the U.S. Coast Guard said the multi-agency search has expanded to an area twice the size of Connecticut. The submersible known as the Titan begins each trip with 96 hours of life support and has been missing since Sunday, setting up Thursday morning as a key target for finding the vessel and those on board. The operation was still a search and rescue mission 100% U.S. Coast Guard Captain Jamie Frederick stressed Wednesday. It remains unclear whether the banging noises are from the missing submersible, he said, Navy experts were analyzing recordings of the sounds in an attempt to determine their origin. I can't tell you what the noises are, he said. Meanwhile, the underwater search is about two and a half miles deep in the area where the noises were detected Tuesday and Wednesday, Frederick noted. The underwater sounds were detected by sonar devices deployed to find the 21-foot vessel that lost contact Sunday while descending 13,000 feet to the bottom of the ocean on a tour of the Titanic's wreckage. The banging on Tuesday first came every 30 minutes and was heard again four hours later, according to an internal government memo update of the search. The noises were detected by a Canadian P-3 aircraft and prompted the relocation of resources to explore their origin. Searches have yielded negative results, the U.S. Coast Guard tweeted early Wednesday. Additional acoustic feedback was heard and will assist in victoring surface assets and also indicating continued hope of survivors, according to a Coast Guard update. It was unclear when exactly the banging was heard on Tuesday or how long it lasted based on the memo. 
The aircraft picked up the banging noises again Wednesday morning, Frederick said, offering a ray of hope in an increasingly bleak situation made worse by the possibility of the oxygen supply running out as early as Thursday morning. Frederick said the oxygen level is just one piece of data rescuers are analyzing. He also said officials believe the submersible crew has limited rations of food and water. So if y'all were wondering how far down they were trying to go, here is a picture of different feet going all the way down to the abysmal zone in the ocean. Can y'all see that? So they were trying to go far, far down, way too far for me, okay? They shouldn't have been going down there in the first place, to be honest with you. And y'all, to make it so bad, they had a game controller controlling this submersible. Like they didn't have legit equipment to control this submersible. Like they got the game controller from Amazon or somewhere, you know, like nothing legit. They probably got it from Tours of Us, who knows? But that's what they were using to actually control the submersible while they submerged themselves down into the deep depths of the ocean. And to make it even more worse, <laughs> they paid starting at $250,000 each to go into this submersible to go see the Titanic, which they use a game controller to control the submersible. Yeah, y'all, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's wild to me. It's really wild. And from my understanding, the Titan is held underwater by a ballast, which is a heavy weight that helps with the vessel stability. It's built to automatically be released after 24 hours to send the sub back to the surface. And the crew members are told they can release the ballast by rocking the ship or use a pneumatic pump to knock the weights free. If all this fails, the line securing the ballast are designed to fall apart after 24 hours to automatically send it back to the ocean's surface. And take note that when they get into the submersible, it gets hot very quick. But as they go down further into the depths of the ocean, it gets freezing cold inside of the submersible. And if the submersible stays in deep waters too long, hypothermia can be an issue as well. It's like a visit to another planet. It's not what people think it is. It is a sunless, forever cold environment. High pressure, says David Gallo. He is a senior advisor for strategic initiative RMS Titan. Sean Leet, he is the co-founder and chairman of the company which owns the submersibles, said that... The he was aware of the time sensitivity around the mission, but said we have to hold out hope. The Titan, which these five men were on, was operated by Ocean Gate Expeditions. And the expedition was part of the growing business of wealthy adventure tourism, along with the space flights of Blue Origin and the rise of guided tours to Mount Everest and reflects the ongoing fascination with the Titanic more than a century after it sank on its maiden voyage. And come to find out, two former Ocean Gate employees actually came out and expressed the safety concerns about the vessel's hull years ago, including the thickness of the material used in testing procedures. And there were court filings that revealed Ocean Gate years ago was confronted with safety concerns about the vessel. And remember who I named in the beginning? One of the five people who were on the Titan was the Ocean Gate CEO, Stockton Rich. Rich, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I meant Stockton Rush. That is his name. And come to find out, y'all, when concerns were raised by contractors and employees, Rush, the CEO, got defensive and shied away from answering questions during all staff meetings. And when the two former employees 
actually went to Rush with concerns that Ocean Gate could potentially be violating a U.S. law relating to Coast Guard inspections. Rush actually dismissed them, and that's when the employees decided to resign from the position. But listen, all I got to say is someone might try to sue. Someone might try to sue Ocean Gate Expeditions for all of this uh, because something went wrong and they cannot come back up. They were supposed to come back up after 24 hours. Something went wrong with this Titan vessel and someone might sue. Some of the other people on the vessel might sue. Eh. Hey, do I blame them? No, I don't. Now, if they sign some kind of waiver saying that they waive their rights that if they um, do not come back up after 24 hours and, and if they D.I.E., then that's on them. You know, I don't know if they signed anything like that. I didn't read and, you know, and saw anything saying that they had to sign anything. But if they didn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lawsuits. And, you know, I really wouldn't blame them for actually trying to sue but then like i said in the beginning i'm not even sure why they actually went out there what was going through their minds and why they thought that was a good idea to be going in a submersible to go look for the titanic crazy okay but i'm trying to be nice okay i'm trying to be nice okay so you know <laughs> this is a tragic situation a tragic situation because uh, a 19 year old was going with his dad and they they may not make it we don't know but we're we're trying to be hopeful and i'm trying to be hopeful too as well i hope that they can be found i hope that they can continue to hear the 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 knocking noises that's coming from what they think is the titan and i hope that's where it's coming from and i hope that they can get these people out of the um the depths of the ocean but listen it's a no for me um yeah we me and my child just went on vacation and we went on a cruise and one of the tours that were offered was a submarine ride and i was like girl no mm -mm. i was like no baby no my spirit was like eh and listen, I am up to trying different things, okay? But <laughs> not that submarine, okay? No, I'm trying to, you know, be adventurous too as well, but not that adventurous, no. When she said a submarine ride, I said, no, baby, no. Mm -mm. Your mama ain't getting up. Your mama ain't getting one and we ain't going up under the water, okay? Okay. Now, the best I can do for you is get on a plane get on a helicopter, get on a ship, but going underwater, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that was a no for me. So what do y'all think about this whole situation with these five men who decided to get on a submersible and try to go down to the dark, deep depths of the ocean to see the Titanic. Now take note, other people have done this too as well, but however, their submersible came back up and theirs have not came back up yet. And so by tomorrow, they probably won't have enough oxygen left in the submersible and they don't have enough food or water down there either. So what do y'all think about this situation? Y'all know what y'all got to do. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Share this video if you like. Like this video as well. And y'all know what y'all got to do. Stay tuned for the next video. Alrighty, bye.